CA Productions invites you to join us for Coastal Connections with Courtney. This new and exciting television program is designed to showcase wonderful things taking place in South Mississippi. Join Courtney Anderson as she personally takes you on a journey all along the Mississippi Gulf Coast. You'll meet many local leaders, business owners, and interesting people who make a positive difference in these communities. Coastal Connections with Courtney will also showcase a wide variety of great places to eat, shop, and explore. There's so much to see in South Mississippi. So come along for the ride and enjoy Coastal Connections with Courtney. and welcome to another Sunday of Coastal Connections with Courtney. Here we are in Gulfport, Mississippi at Boyce Holloman Associates. Today we get to speak and get to know Mr. Tim Holloman. Hi everyone and welcome to another Sunday with Coastal Connections with Courtney. Here we are in Gulfport, Mississippi at Boyce Holloman and Associates with partner Mr. Tim Holloman. How you doing, Courtney? Hey Tim, how are you? you? Again, and we go you. so far back. <laughs> I mean, this is just so surreal sitting there with Papa Boyce <laughs> and you. You've been practicing since when? Uh, 1981. 1981. Hard to believe. And you started, you went to Ole Miss. Right. You and your brother Dean. Yeah, Dean and I were in law school. He was two years behind me. Yes. And Mike was there. At uh -huh. Mike and I were there. At he sure time. was. That's yeah. right. That's right. right. So growing up, what was it like being a Holloman and it raised was, and boomed right into being an attorney? It was a, it was a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. uh, before I even became a lawyer, I, we used to go to court with Dad because back in those days you didn't have television like you had now. So when a trial was going on, right, everybody came. It was standing room only in Stone County. Down here you'd have packed courtrooms. You don't see that much anymore because of television. But right. So early age, we loved the law, and we and I would watch Dad. And even back when we were kids, he would turn and wink at you in the courtroom, and he kind of knew something was fixing to happen. Oh. So later when we started practicing law with him, you'd be sitting in the courtroom. He'd turn and wink at you, and you knew he was fixing to do something. Yeah. So he carried that on even in the practice of law. So it was, it was a great thing to grow up around the Hollowmans and the Dabs. Yes. When our two families joined together. I know it. The Christmases and Thanksgivings were a lot of fun. If there was a lot of pandemonium sometimes, it was yeah. a lot of fun. Oh, for a sure. A lot of pandemonium. Right. And I'll tell you, like, looking back over that and those memories, they oh, were priceless. No, they were. Boys and I still and see Annie you in a little, little blonde headed and a little dress. <laughs> About three or four years old. Well, <laughs> I mean, Tim, y'all are so, you know, entrenched on the Mississippi Gulf yes. Coast. You're so well known. You do yeah. personal injury, criminal, and family. Right, family law. And I also represent the Board of Supervisors of Harrison County, which Dad also did before he, he when he was a lawyer. So, Well, someone like me, when you say that, what, like, what does that entail on top of the other things you do? Well, the board is the governing body for right. Harrison County as a whole, so they do a lot. They, they have a... It's probably the best form of government we have because you have a direct say-so with your supervisors. Mm -hmm. And so the board attorney helps advise the board. And it's a lot of work. It comes from a lot of different directions. You may have somebody with a tree problem, mm -hmm. and you may have somebody with a major development. So it runs the gamut for all types of problems. And how long have you been doing that? I, I did it with Dad when he was board attorney for 10 years. And then in 2009, I was selected as board attorney. So I've been doing it since 2009. And I just got rehired. I had to hold my breath for a minute. And yeah, sure. yeah, you're everywhere. We always hold our breath the first of the year. Sure. <laughs> well, how exactly, you know, driving, I always get those little chill bumps because I see Boyce Holloman Boulevard yeah. and I always throw out, my grandmother's married to Boyce. That was a, that's quite an honor. You know, they, yeah. they, they got a marker right down at the end of the street. Mm -hmm. and somebody came, asked my brother one day, how's your dad like being buried at the end of the street down there? He said, we're not buried down there because it looks kind of like a tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you heard me. This, I was like, tell me about the statue. You're like, it's not a statue. No, not really a statue. No, I had, know. We had one of his acting, they made a little statue. Uh -huh. I don't know if we lost that in Katrina. I hadn't seen it in a while, so it may have gone down with Katrina, unfortunately. 
it was a statue of Dad doing the Clarence Darrow stuff show that he used to do. You know, Dad became quite an actor. Oh yeah, we grew yeah. up, and Aunt Louise yeah. would go and support yeah. him. We'd be out there. He was always I think he did doing probably, the acting. Yeah, he probably did five or six movies and did uh -huh. a bunch of on television stuff that was pretty good. I didn't know he did do movies. Yes, yeah, so he probably he had probably five or six. Probably the best one that I remember was uh, Eudora Welty's Ponder Heart, which mm -hmm. was actually a good Southern show. And the worst one he ever did was the uh, what was it called, The Beast Within. And, uh -huh. I'm ashamed to say that one got the dog of the week, I think, at Siskel and Ebert. But it was it, it was one of those shows where a man was turning into a monster and Dad was the doctor trying to figure out <laughs> what was, why he was turning into a monster. Oh, boys. He got bit by something. Oh, my gosh. I'm so aw <laughs> That's awesome. And I have some of those pictures, so I'm excited to let everybody yes. kind of, you know, yeah. jump into that. And, you know, Boyce is so well known for yes. being an actor and just a character. He yeah. loved the casinos, and I know he would run right. into a lot of his clients there. Yes, he did. Uh, one time, Dad was at, uh, in 1992, was at the casino, and this gentleman was sitting next to him, and Dad said, you look familiar to me. Do I know you? And <laughs> this is like in 1992. Wow. And Dad said, and the guy says, yeah, you sent me to the gas chamber in 1965. No. And Dad said, well, you didn't make it, did you? And he said, no, I didn't. And so he had gotten paroled, and he was yeah. 18 years old and shot a policeman in Wiggins, and an armed policeman and, and got the death penalty. And then in the seventies, they commuted all the deaths to it. So, but he, you know what? He didn't hold any ill will towards dad. Mm -hmm. He said, I was a young thug then. And, and basically and, thanked yeah. him. That's yeah. probably his turning yeah. point in his life. So you, you never knew back then. Right, you either, happened. you know, get it together or you don't. And yeah. what, you know, for so many people that know boys and know Holloman Associates, they all say you remind him so much of, <laughs> of your daddy. <laughs> Do you dad, see that now when you're practicing? You know, I don't see it. Uh, I, I see hear it. it. I see it in Dean a lot. You do? It, Dean looks like him, and Mike looks like him more so yeah. than me. I, I think I look more like my mother's side of the family. Your mixture. I, I, I do probably have the gift of gab a little bit, not as good as dad's, but I certainly talk more than the others sometimes. But So I would I get that from him. We like to tell stories, and we like to have fun. Right. As my wife says, I seem to see the humor in most things, and I do. Isn't that great, though? That's yeah. what life's about. Yeah. You've got to, if you're not laughing, what in the world? That's what you I can't say. take yourself all, so serious. No matter what you're doing, there's something funny about it. Human and you're so, yeah, you're so commissive, and you're so warm, but you yeah. are representing very serious cases. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, you know, criminal practices, I enjoy the criminal practice. It's probably the hardest because you do usually have people's lives in your hands. I can't imagine. Don't want to make mistakes in that. Uh, it, but it's rewarding when you have cases. Uh, people think that when somebody's charged with something, they're always guilty. That's not always true. Mm -hmm. We have a presumption of innocence for a reason. And, and many people get charged that aren't guilty. And, and fortunately, I've had that pleasure of having people that weren't guilty. I also had some that were, but usually right. worked those cases out. Uh, but the criminal practice, the personal injury work is, is a lot of fun too, and it's very rewarding. Uh, I like to think we make a difference. You know, we're here to help people. That's what practicing law is about. It, whether it's a criminal case, a divorce case, or a personal injury case, you're there to help your client. And so that's what we try to do. I think that's what Dad taught us. And you have been practicing, you started practicing with your dad yes. in 2003? Two no, two 1980. Oh my it, gosh! You're I cut you off. Than I, I got wait. A, eight, oh, I was born in '82. <laughs> I, oh my gosh! I graduated in uh, December of '80 <laughs> and started practicing law in January of '81. So I'll be 42 years this year. Uh, and you still love it. Look at yeah, you just trucking. I it. do love it. I, it's it, when I quit loving it, I'll quit. I mean, it, ultimately, it's it's fun. It's it's satisfying. You know, I've represented oh, yeah. a gamut of people. I. Most recently had a young lady that had been hit by a drunk driver and we represented her against a, involving a casino that had overserved the person that was uh -huh. driving. And so when you help those kind of people and you're successful in doing it, you know, you do make a difference in these people's lives. I can't imagine what this young lady's life would have been about if we had not been able to help her. Right. Uh, helped her and her family because they would have carried the burden. And she's a wonderful person and doing wonderful in life is actually taken her disability and turned it into something positive. She helps other people now that have disabilities. And so. Oh, see, that's what I love about testimonies. Yes. And, and I'm see, you see all sides because she yes. comes to you in devastation just pleading yes. for help. That's, 
I got accused in that case by the other lawyer of being too personally involved in the case because at one point in time I was talking uh, during the case about this young lady and I, I, I started crying. And Your heart's he, bigger he, than Texas. He said, you were, you were too close to this case. I said, well, she's the same age as my daughter, and so it does mm -hmm. hit close to home sometimes. Uh, that was a very difficult case, difficult for them and difficult for everyone involved. But it ended up being yes. good. And and we ended up, yes, we ended up doing very well for her in that case and able to take care of herself now independently. Yeah. Right. And uh, your brother, Dean, he Dean. practices, so y'all two are the owner partners right. of Boys Hall Associates. Yeah, Dean and I practiced together, and his son Hollis is now with the firm. He's just starting out, so it's three of us. I saw that. I saw an article. That's great. Yeah, he's he's, uh, he's going to be a fine young lawyer, too. He's and going through the raising baby stage at the same time. Yes, and I want to touch on that. <laughs> y'all still, y'all have... You know, kept the expansion of the Holloman oh, family. Y'all yeah. have got a beautiful family. I've got three grandchildren, and they're the love of my life. You know, yes. I never realized what you know. Children, children are different than grandchildren. They're just, they're just different. Mm -hmm. And it's so much fun being around them, especially now that you're older. You, you don't have to. You can hand them back when they're bad, but. <laughs> Which right. Yeah, fun. I know. I'm an aunt. I get it. And I know my little brother, you yeah. know, just at oh, yeah. Leslie, and he just adores her. And um, at the Addie, they hang oh, out yeah. with Addie and her yeah. family Addie, quite a bit. Addie's now just had Rowan, who was uh, just born about a month ago. And, of course, she's got Gunner and Grayson, too, who are eight and seven. Uh-huh. We live next door, so they're at our house all the time, which is great. So. Well, like you were talking about your cases and how, you mm -hmm. know, you, they said you got personal and you are, you're such, yeah. you're such a, you're a daddy, you're well, a friend, you're an uncle, you're a brother, you're a son. I think what I but hear you're from, changing lives. I think what I hear from most of our clients is that we show we care about them. Oh yeah. Not just Obvious. a case and we do care about them and we try to take care of them. Not during the lawsuit, not just during the lawsuit, but even afterwards, you know, mm -hmm. you, lots of things go on afterwards that you have to help people with. And it's very gratifying when you're successful at it. It's disappointing when you're not. I mean, if you can't help yeah. somebody, it's not fun. Well, and you, you're really good from hearing from Lisa and your family. You're really good at leaving work here and then going <laughs> and play your other hats and roles. I'm not sure. I'm not sure Lisa would agree with that, but cause I do yes. work. we do work a lot. I mean, I, I enjoy work, and so to me, working's not really. I hard. know, I get it. I love my job so, too. So you know, I yeah. go home at night. Not fun watching TV nowadays. So uh, it <laughs> so sure I, is. I, I'd rather work on a case than watch TV most of the time. I know that's why we only have positive vibes and, on Coastal and, Connections. You know, uh, working on a case is like a novel. It's like a book. It is. And so you're reading. It's like reading a John Grisham novel. It really is. And so. And you are writing the outcome pretty that's right. much. You're you have the responsibility. To, that's right. You're trying to figure out. Sure. To figure out to win the case, and so it's not unlike writing a novel. And, in fact, the John Grisham book, Boys of Biloxi, you know. Yes. It, have you read that one? Yes, I have. And that's about Paul Paul Boys, about dad, dad yeah. when he was DA. I, I'm going to read it. I've heard yes. all about it. I've read all the reviews. I, I, and I tell you, it's really interesting. And night, dad was DA and from 53 to 1970, approximately. I don't remember the exact years, but during the course of that was when all that was going on with the Dixie Mafia. In 61, his airplane was blown up with five sticks of dynamite in Wiggins. And fortunately, we had gone to our camp in Van Cleve, and lightning hit the hangar and set it off. It was rigged to blow up when he cranked it, but lightning hit the hangar and set it off, so it blew up in the hangar. But you know, I can remember going back from our camp in Van Cleve back to Wiggins to see it. I never was scared. It never entered my mind that this was something that I should be scared of. Sure. Now, when I read the book, in the book, the you DA, were like, I was living it. Well, the the DA's name is Jess, mm. and Dad's name was Jesse Boyce Holland. So the DA in the book is Jess, and he gets blown up, but his office gets blown up, and he gets killed. And when I read that part of the book for the first time in my life, I kind of got a cold, cold chill. Yeah, about how you, close we came to being orphans as and you lived as Holloman kids back in those days. Well, listen, we are going to take a quick break. Okay. I want to hear more about that, maybe a few okay. stories. There's so much history oh. right here at Boyce Fall and Associates. And mm -hmm. we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back.
Visit the Gulf Coast's newest casino. Come in today and experience the beautiful, smoke-free Beachview Casino. Pick your game. We have your favorite slots and table games and a sports book. Enjoy incredible views while you dine at one of our many restaurants. And grab a drink while you enjoy live entertainment every weekend in the heart of the action. The Gulf Coast's newest, the smoke-free Beachview Casino Resort, Gulfport. Thank you for calling J. Allen Toyota Service. This is what happens when you set an appointment at J. Allen Toyota Service. We will order the part right then so it'll be here when your appointment comes. Our greeter staff will greet you quickly and friendly and top off your fluids before your car even leaves the drive. Then your car will go to one of our six two-man express teams or one of our 10 certified technicians so they can get you back on the road safely and quickly. This is service the way it should be at J. Allen Toyota Service. Now at Buja Select Ford, get a new 2022 F-150 XLT for $4,000 off, plus 1.9% APR financing. Don't forget, we'll beat your best deal regardless. Beacon of healing, resolute and consistent, determined. We are problem solvers, driven to overcoming obstacles, unshakable. We are prepared, capable, experienced, unbeatable. We are a network of people providing care throughout your lifetime. We are believers in the healing power of compassion. We are Memorial. Tim, so if you have not read Boys of Biloxi, you highly recommend it if you live in the South. Yes, I've, re I've read it and it's, it's very true. The, the time frame they skipped about 20 years forward, mm -hmm. really about 20 years before when all that stuff was happening, but the book is well researched and a lot of truth in it. Names yes. are changed for yeah. the most part, but it's a lot of truth in what occurred. And Dad and Gaston Hughes Sr. were the two prosecutors that were trying to clean up the coast. Their lives were threatened multiple times, and as I said earlier, Dad's plane was blown up, so it's very close to, to what actually the book's about. Well, I'd like for you, you know, that being so real to you, and you experiencing that now looking back and people talking about it, you're like, I lived <laughs> that. I was just kind of, you know, floating through. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, it well, you know, I, as a child, I never felt threatened. I, mm -hmm. I remember several times that we had the highway patrol show up at the house yeah. and police cars would be outside for a few days. And those were obvious, I didn't know at the time, but were threats that had been made against Dad and, and or Gaston. Oh. And then when his plane was blown up, I kept a piece of it for years. I don't know what happened to it in one of the moves, I lost it. But uh, that was, but I never felt threatened then. Now, when I read the book and the DA and that book got blown up, it, it made me pause for a minute that how close we came to being orphans and didn't know it. Right. I mean, I will really, tell you, though, funny dad used to go out and tell me to go crank his car for him. And I always thought it was just him being honoring me. And I'm not so sure now that it wasn't to test it. <laughs> oh, my God. No, really. I'm just kidding. No, seriously, that makes sense. <laughs> no, he wanted his car warmed up. <laughs> so were you were growing up, you would see the police cars and you were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah another just, day at, um, with Boy Solomon. We'd go out and play with them. You know, we'd go out yeah. and get in the police cars. I would. I'd be waving. I, mean, I, way, I, I was young enough to where you didn't know anything about that kind of thing. You just didn't understand it. Right. Uh, so, I, I never. My mother was scared sometimes. I, I do kind of remember her being scared at points, but I didn't know why. You know, too young to know that. Yeah. 
Uh, but it was pretty interesting to grow up with Dad, and to practice law with him was even more fun because once you got in the courtroom with him, uh, you know, he would do things like in the middle of the trial, he would wink, and you would know he's fixing to do something. And sure, lo and behold, I guess it was about would, to be the climax. He would do something to stir things up, I'll call it. And, uh, it's pretty interesting about that. That would be cool, that being your dad. I'd be like, here's the wink. It's yeah, about he, to be he, all. He was what he would do, yeah. too. He never knew what it was going to be. And, he was a master at, at taking something and he would get some fact that I would think is insignificant and he would start working on it, working on it, working on it. Before you knew it, that's what the whole case was about. And it would win because of that. He would turn the case into something that somebody didn't understand that it was even coming before he did it. So he was a masterful uh, trial lawyer. And I think part of that is why he became an actor because there's a lot of acting in the law too. Right, and you uh, can change, be kind of a chameleon. Yeah, and he... He was very, most people will tell you that he was very astute at, at that. And he knew people too. Uh, so he you know, was big on human nature and, and knew people. And he was a master at trial. He just was. I always marveled at him in the courtroom. Well, I heard that he was so successful because of that cute wife he married. Yeah, yeah. I think her name was Annie <laughs> Louise. Annie Aunt Louise was a wonderful addition yes. to our lives. I, she was so She'd be right there with her high heels with him all everywhere. She was a pleasure. She was she a, a was. great Southern lady. Mm. It's about the best way to describe her and just as kind hearted as you could be. And she loved the Holloman kids as much as she loved the Dabs children and Anderson children. They were a beautiful couple. And I'll tell you, ever growing up, every time I would go over to the Holloman house, you know, boys would always tell me a very interesting historical oh, yeah. story. And at oh, the time, yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, we're in war again. Well, but now I'm like, I don't wow. Know, you probably won't remember this because you would have been young, but uh, your mother and my dad and Lisa and I went to Saipan, where Dad was shot down in World War II, to look for his airplane in 1990. Is that? That's the airplane here. That's a TBF or a TBM. Wow. Uh, and it was I a see. torpedo bomber. And so we flew to Saipan, which was a 27 hour plane ride, and we had a great time. We did not find the plane, but eventually in 2004, they actually found the remains of his plane. And it's still there today. You can go look at it on the internet. It's pretty cool. And that was really cool, probably you getting it to was experience cool. it. It was cool for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really was. And it was a, it was a very sombering uh, sure. thing because oh, when I'm we, sure. Dad lost his two, his two uh, crew members bailed out over Saipan. They've never been found to this day. They still look for them, in fact. And so I correspond with a great niece of one of his crew members. And we're hoping, I hope before I die and pass that they'll find the crew members and I'll get to go and bring them home. Oh, Help yeah. bring them home. Because Dad literally, probably one of the few times in my life I saw him cry is when we got there and he started, we were at the site where he crashed and he started telling the story about the two men that he, felt responsible for. They bailed out over the island, of course, and he thought he was going to die too, but he fortunately survived. He got shot down on my birthday, June 17th, 1944. God. I was born June 17th, 1956. All my birthdays, all my life, every <laughs> birthday dad would say, this is the day, I, your birthday and the day of the anniversary I got shot down. And as a young child, I go, why do you keep bringing that up? <laughs> I know <laughs> what you're going to say, party. dad. <laughs> He was kind of funny in that. But respect. really, though, I mean, he had yeah. about nine lives. If you go he back did. and the stories you've told me, I mean, I wish we he we did. could make a movie really about. They, they could make a movie about Dad. It would probably be. Yeah, a good but one you too. too, and the brothers, and the yeah. stepping up into I, the business. And I, I've read a lot about you. And the one thing that really stood out to me is you said the most proud you were was of what you and the brothers and the family. Y'all have continued, you feel like, the honest yeah, I, moral values. I, yes, I think we've carried on Dad's tradition. Dad always cared about the common folks. You know, he yeah. really, when I say he common did. folks, he, contained, he, he didn't represent a lot of people that were wealthy. He represented poor folks. That's what I think so of, too. We've carried that over, I think, and we try to help people and, and uh, you know, help people that need help. Sometimes, as Dad said, you don't always get paid, but you got to help them. Isn't that the truth? And then hopefully every once in a while one comes in that can pay you. <laughs> I get it. I, I'll tell you a story about Dez. This, is, <laughs> this came from Mike. Dad, in 1996, had open heart surgery. And so when you have open heart surgery, they tell you you got to get up and walk. Mm -hmm. And so Dad is walking up down the hallways at Memorial Hospital, and these two men are on a ladder painting. Mm -hmm. 
and they're, they're painters. And when they, when dad passed them, they got off of their ladders and took their hats off and put them over their heart. And when dad passed, they got back up on the ladder and started painting again. And dad turned around to my brother, Mike, and said, the greatest thing in my life is to have been a, to be admired by men such as them. I know. Which is a great statement. I, I mean, start it. thinking about it. He, he gave you know, everyone the benefit of doubt, yeah, he, and he listened. He loved He people. listened. He would see potential. He would hear the need. Yeah. It didn't matter where you were from, what journey. And I think Dean and I have carried that over. Oh, I know Hollis you have. Too, and you know, we, we do our best to help people. In the day of TV advertisement, sometimes it gets a little rough. <laughs> we don't advertise on TV. I still don't like that, but... I wish they would take well, it see, off that's there. I know I've been I've had so many people request you, and I've been dying to get just because this is so historical. There's yeah. so much history and success, but well, it was, boils down to you know, like you and your dad yeah. saying those are the type of people that make me yeah. proud to do what I do. That's right. He was. That's what he said. That's what makes me most proud to be admired by men such as them. Right. And what he meant was they're common folks. They're not they're mm -hmm. not bankers, they're not lawyers, they're not exactly. rich. They're but just they're just painters. like everybody else. And and been, so been, is the president, so is the rich man. It doesn't matter. They it's meant just, as much to him as anybody did. And that's I think that's true of his life. And there's lots of stories people tell about him. Um, and I'll tell you our Thanksgiving dinners, I love it because we had yeah, we, some people in the family that were a little bit more crack the whip. <laughs> But boys would sit there, and he would get his opinion. He would get right. his values. And I remember being like, yeah. Right. Those were the days with yeah, the old Pollamans and the dads. He's and the as smart together. as a whip, and he always had a good point. He loved all the grandkids. He loved And kids, but he loved y'all as kids. I used to love to watch him. Watch oh, them. yeah. He thought he told me I was a great singer, he so was. I got the microphone. I was horrible. <laughs> I listened to the videos, and everybody's <laughs> like, he egged her on. We always think we're horrible when we sing to ourselves. <laughs> no, but it was so fun. <laughs> and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Your mother was a, a, a true delight. We were better oh. for having been around her. Well, I'll tell you, Mama's a good her. person, but you, your whole family is. And, um, you know, I, I hope that we touch a little bit about the history. I yeah. hope Papa Boyce is smiling down. <laughs> I'm sure and, he is. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool that. He's probably going, don't mess it up, son. I know. <laughs> tell this story. And Mama's probably like, oh, Courtney. But um, I just want to thank you for your service. I, did. I, I do want to mention Larry Bourgeois, the judge. Oh, he mentioned me, him. I'm getting him back by mentioning him. Oh, yeah, he claimed you as a he, buddy. He's a great judge and a good buddy. Uh -huh. uh, he rules against me sometimes, but that's okay. He's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, I know. And see, that's what's so fun about my job. Now I consider him a dear friend. Yeah. We, yeah, I mean, we'll talk sometimes. I'm like, yeah. hey, Judge Larry. He's so funny. I know. He's quite a character. Well, well, listen, a lot of fun. I, I just adore you, you. you. We all do. We appreciate well, you. you. And you. I know you have a busy schedule, but thank you for letting us get to know you a little bit. I appreciate and, it. And hear about where all this started and being carried <laughs> right. on by such a good family. Well, we, we got Hollis coming next. So the, I the, know. The next and generation's been, behind us. Isn't that great? Isn't that great?